What is up, everybody? Uh, so, like I promised, I'm going to make a pretty quick video discussing DXYZ and a lot of these daily charts in general. Uh, it has been a very, very long day and long week, so I am not going to go so too crazy with this video. I need to travel tomorrow, and I am very tired and want to go to bed. So, um, let's see. I mean, obviously, everybody probably has been following along enough and knows the whole deal. Uh, Trump election kicks off this whole big move in stocks. Um, starts off innocuous enough, right? Uh, Tesla really only gapped up 25 bucks, or sorry, excuse me, 35 bucks. And even that move seemed a little bit ridiculous just because the options were not pricing anything like that in. Again, why do I say that? Because Trump and and Kamala were, were essentially 50-50, you know, 55-45, 60-40, who gives a shit? It's, it's rounding error, right? And so in theory, if there's a 50% chance that Trump wins, the implied volatility should be priced so that essentially you make, you know, double your money, right? If there's, if there's half a chance that you're going to lose 100% and half a chance that, you know, Trump wins and you're going to double your, your option, um, in theory, if it's a perfectly efficient market, that should be how the options market would would price that uh, that move based on the election odds. Obviously, that is not what happened at all. And from the very first day, clearly volatility was underpriced as this held up and kept going, which says nothing for how epic this move was. Um, I've not pulled up the options, but I would imagine you know a a three hundred call. Uh, on two weeks or whatever, say say the fifteenth, you know, expiring this this Friday, November fifteenth. I don't know what this this call would have been worth. I'd, I'd imagine like a couple bucks, and this ended up going to three fifty. So you you'd get potentially twenty five x. You know, again, I've not fact checked that, but anywho, these moves ended up exploding, right? And so I think some of the most popular tickers were Tesla. Um, Palantir. We had Coin, of course, going with 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 Bitcoin. We had DXYZ, which is is what I'm going to get into quite a bit. And so, really, when I look at this, Tesla made a 35 point gap and kind of had this this tight range where we reclaimed and closed. Not not strong, but not weak either. It, it held up pretty well. Next day, uh, fairly innocuous, 10 point up bar. We then break 300 off this day's open, which first of all, that was a mega long. Like the intraday was beautiful on that thing. We break out off the, it was towards the open, I believe, and just explode. Um, so that was one really cool uh, zero T DTE opportunity. And then we closed super, super strong. Like this did not let up that day. We even had, you know, also, actually, I'm just going to pull this up. Beautiful, beautiful consolidation. Um... Yeah, here's the 300 breakout as I discussed. Boop, 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 boop. 300 breakout, beauty. The other beauty, of course, is this setup here. Like, that is that is as perfect uh, as a consolidation as you can really get. Um, but that's not really what I want to talk about overall. So what was happening, especially starting on this day, 11-8, and I do think a lot of these moves are driven by option flow, number one. The other thing is I think with the advent of overnight trading, I do think you get a lot of international capital flows pushing into these U.S. markets now. I do think overnight trading really, really started to link global markets together where people can trade the U.S. market, which of course is some of the most liquid um, and also just awesome markets in the world. I, I think it's the most awesome, you know, because I think everybody wants to be trading Apple, Tesla, GME, AMC, and all the other crap. And so you would get this dynamic where on this day, um, after hours and, and overnight, this started to really, really ramp. And even though after hours we trickle up, we then just explode into that overnight. Like I think we were exploding into the high 330s, which already seemed like a what the hell move. Um, then on, we then open up even higher. We do kind of have that fail. Um, you know, we have, we have the drive, we kind of fail, but then we reclaim. And then what happens after hours is we push again. <clears throat> so that's a lot of Tesla. And there's a reason why I'm discussing so much on Tesla. But now let's sidestep this and talk about Palantir or even APP. So APP, this is an earnings move. So some people are talking about this, but the reality is, is like, 
like it's really hard for me to deduce how much of this move is due to earnings and how much is due to the, just the current market euphoria. Um, without a doubt, some is due to the market euphoria, but nevertheless, look how well this held up today. Like I do not want to start messing with this. The other thing is look how well this reclaimed on the prior day. So APP wasn't on my list. So Palantir. Palantir is another case. Uh, and I, I, if I'm not mistaken, I mean, this I haven't been as following as closely, but I believe this was, um, yeah, this was earnings on the 5th. Then we just kept going with, with everything else. So here's what I would say. Palantir is one of the most absurdly valued stocks in the market, right? But I'm a trader, not an investor, but I don't understand who own, owns this dog shit because it is so insanely overpriced. Palantir fundamentally will not be able to grow into its valuation. Probably again, I have no idea what I'm talking about, but probably over the next 10 years. So do I think this stock is a total joke um, from an investing standpoint? Yes. But nevertheless, on the daily chart, the, these bars weren't expanding like we saw in Tesla. This is just a very con consolidatory, that's not a word, but whatever, bar. And then we start to go. But then we have this bar, which, you know, the ranges aren't expanding. And look what the volume's doing. It's going down, 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 down. So that is extremely, uh, from a trading perspective, disinteresting to me. Then we've got stuff like coin. So here's the issue with coin. Like, if I take Bitcoin, you know, let me, yeah, if I take, oops. If I take Bitcoin, let me go back over two years. So my issue with coin is Bitcoin from those lows two years ago has gone up a roughly 5x. Then we had the mother of all breakouts, mega breakout. Like no one should ever be short Bitcoin into this. Like obviously you, this is just a massive long. Um, one of the best, this is probably one of the best market setups. I know it's not a market, but like, I mean, it's not really a stock either, obviously, but, but this is one of the best setups I've seen in a really, really long time. This may, might've been one of the best daily charts of 2024, oops, 2024. But to my point, if we take this Coinbase, this Coinbase, uh, moves obviously very, very well with, with Bitcoin, of course. And so Bitcoin's doing the mega breakout, right? And this had kind of been lagging into that, right? So Bitcoin is breaking out to highs and this is starting from all the way down there. So to some degree, I worried that this could be some level of, of catch up. Um, and, you know, so like then we really gap with this move. But again, like at this point, 280 is a massive breakout. So like I almost view this somewhat day one-esque. And again, it's just moving so correlated to Bitcoin that it's just like, it's just probably like, not that it won't collapse or can't collapse independently, but if I'm bullish Bitcoin, like why am I going to short the thing that's pretty much just moving as a levered move with Bitcoin? And that's kind of the same logic with MSTR. Um, and these, these, I mean, MSTR was even way st relatively strong to Bitcoin. So like all the shorts in this are just getting taken to the cleaners absolutely wrecked. And again, why would I short something that's moving levered to Bitcoin when Bitcoin was the most bullish setup of this year? So none of that really made sense to me. And now the one ticker I haven't talked about so much is DXYZ. Okay. So like all the nuances matter, which is why I pose these questions to people on Twitter and people on Twitter will literally, you know, we, we get an answer like, oh, you know, I just study the range or I study this one nuance or I study this one thing. And it's like, the reason why most people are struggling is because they're literally looking with the most simplistic lens ever. And it's just, this is not an activity where you can just put in the base amount of effort and the base amount of analysis and the base, like to have edge versus the market, your analysis needs to be better than the market. If you're just like, oh, tee -hee, this has a big range. Well, guess what? That's how you end up shorting coin and making no money. That's how you sh end up shorting MSTR and getting hosed. That's how you end up shorting PLTR and making no money. You know, like there's such a massive difference in performance if, if you just short DXYZ versus the tickers I just named. And the reason for shorting and being bearish on DXYZ versus these other ones, there's many of them. It's so many things, right? So let's talk about this. What is DXYZ? Okay. First of all, it's not an ETF. An ETF is not the same as a closed end fund. An ETF generally, 
is trading in line with its net asset value, and it has very effective corrective measures to be armed out and trade and issue new shares against it. A closed-end fund does not. The reason why this is diverging from its um, net asset value is because it's a closed-end fund, and these often can diverge, and the mechanism to converge is much, much harder. Um, not that I fully understand all these things. Um, so one of the points I'll get to is like, and this isn't that huge of a factor for me, but it's definitely a factor. In theory, um, DXYZ has a shelf out there. Again, I've, I've been too busy to really super dig into the filings and stuff. Supposedly DXYZ is, has a shelf out there that's just waiting to get an SEC approval based on stuff. I don't know why it's taking so long. I don't know what the constraint is above my pay grade right now. Um, but if DXYZ starts issuing more shares, this NAV, like the share price versus NAV, it's going to totally converge. Like if, if that becomes effective and they can issue shares, like boom, this is just collapsed down. You know, I think, I think the NAV is what, six bucks or something now. <clears throat> so why is this going up? First, we did squeeze initially and look how hard this got crushed. Like, yes, we squeezed, um, which was the whole thing's ridiculous and stupid. Like, yes, you can buy this as a trade, but if you're buying this, to invest, you're a moron, which I'll get to on this point. You know, essentially, there's no way this price will ever, ever be sustained over the long run. Literally 0% chance. Um, and sure enough, you got smashed and you lost 80% plus of your money. So we were trading still at a premium. And so the interesting part, though, is, again, this is a closed-end fund. It, it issues its NAV. I don't think this updates more than quarterly. Um, which is fine, right? It's not as if these holdings are going that crazy. And so it does own SpaceX. So essentially, DXYZ is a way for um, investors to backdoor buy SpaceX, which is currently private. Um, and unless you're an accredited investor and willing to kind of pay placement fees, uh, you know, most people can't access it. So of course, Tesla's exploding. Of course, people, uh, you know, Elon Musk effect with the Trump win. Okay, buy DXYZ because it has SpaceX. Now, <clears throat> because of this massive premium it's at, over 100%, I'm sure there are a shit ton of people short. At least at IB, this is, uh, you can short as much as you can eat. This is um, not hard to borrow, no locate issues, etc. So what ends up happening is this starts to explode. Um, now keep in mind, you can look up the holdings and you can see what SpaceX is doing and everything else. Like SpaceX, like, is only a port, yes, yes it's a large portion of this, closed end fund because of how much it's gone up, but in no way is it going up anywhere amount to justify this. Like SpaceX would need to probably go up like a hundred percent to justify a move like this, or sorry, not a hundred percent, like a thousand percent. Obviously SpaceX is not going up a thousand percent. It is a very large company. So, you know, the net asset value obviously is going up, but from $5, like, I don't know, maybe the net asset value is at six, 650. Again, I have no idea. It's such a rounding error to this move that it's just, it's silly to even care or think about. Like in no way will this sustain. And again, if they can then issue some of those shares, it's just game over. But what you see on Twitter is retail is driving this up. Oh my God, you can buy SpaceX. You can buy SpaceX. Um, retail does not understand that, of course, Buying this is, in the long term, very, very dumb. Again, if you're trading this long, you know, whatever. You know what you're doing, you're getting out. If you're holding this for the long term, oh, let me buy SpaceX, you're literally buying SpaceX at like a 1,000x its current valuation, which is, of course, stupid. You are guaranteed to lose money, pretty much. <clears throat> that being said, price range really expands. Now, look at what the volume is doing. The volume is not doing um, what those other charts were doing. The, the volume is expanding and growing. So now the other thing is this also, in my opinion, is going to trade most similar to Tesla, just because Tesla is also trading on the Elon Musk effect. Neither of these tickers are trading on earnings. Neither of these tickers are trading um, due to the rise in Bitcoin. Yes, there's correlation. It's all the same big picture trade. So of course they're going to be correlated, but nevertheless, um, DXYZ and Tesla should have the tightest linkage. So now let's get more granular. Um, Yes, super euphoric day. And now a lot of people that are short, you're scared that it's going to do this. Oh my God, we're going to 100, we're going to 100. So everyone's scared shitless and that's why kind of this is popping. And that's why all the all you can eat shorts are probably covering and you know getting taken to the cleaners. You're trying to make five bucks and boom, you're down 40. Uh, yeah, that hurts. That hurts really, really bad. <clears throat> so this keeps on going. You know, this holds up, this huge volume. 
then then we gap and Tesla's gapping. So now let's start to get into the oops. The, oh God, here we go. The n nitty gritty. Okay. So Tesla is running after hours, then into the overnight session. Again, I have a theory that it's just international flows that wants to be part of the action. Oh my God, I can buy Tesla, tee hee, tee hee. And it just drives us up higher. <clears throat> this day, and this is, you know, for reference 11 8, um, you know, we, we make this, we break 350. And some of this, it's kind of hard to describe, but some of these moves, like especially the $300 break, a lot of these moves feel very driven by options and gamma to me. Just something about like the steadiness and the, the breaks, but whatever. And so this starts to go, then this cracks. <clears throat> now, if we take like the last, like, I don't know, three days, like, you know, okay, Tesla goes up, it consolidates and holds up the whole day. Tesla goes up, it consolidates, makes another leg. Even this prior day, like Tesla had, you know, yeah, like like we, we fail, but then we re reclaim. There hadn't been that much weakness for at least a couple days. So it's kind of interesting that this does that drive and then it cracks super hard. Like even as, as this was cracking, when we couldn't bounce here, I was just like, oh my, that's, this is, this death candle and that inability to bounce is super interesting. I think this was actually what I would call the first tell on the weakness. Um, so... Nevertheless, actually, let me jump to DXYZ. Um, keep in mind, this is 11-11 11 11 at about noon. DXYZ on 11-11. 11 11. Okay, so now DXYZ did the opening drive, and this cracked super, super, super hard. Um, and this generally should be the death. Like, you know, when you go from 50 to 38, that is just pretty much, in general, game over. So what happens here? We start to bounce, and then, you know, Tesla around, oh, God. Tesla around this time is starting to really go. And what happened here was then we super mega bounce. And the most interesting part of this, and again, this goes to all the people that don't believe in reading the tape. The most interesting part of this was that this move was extremely driven by the box. Uh, there was a buyer at 45 bucks just soaking on this thing, buying, 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 buying. You know, then like 46, 47, buy, you know, somebody was buying the shit out of this. Again, if you know how to read the box, you can tell that it is a single buyer. So many people are like, oh, how do you know it's a single buyer? Like, that's just a, a statement out of just total ignorance because you do not understand reading the box. So please, you know, learn rather than be like, oh, there's no way to know. Um, again, of course, you can't be 100% certain, but like, hey, you know, if someone leaves the same graf graffiti sign all over the city, it's probably the same person. But anywho... Um, so then Tesla's breaking out and this is unable to, to do that. Let me actually get an exact timestamp. <clears throat> so at 11 is when Tesla breaks out. What is DXYZ doing? Um, it's, it's rolling over actually. And so what happened here is, is this buyer, <clears throat> he finally collapses. So the, you know, this was the death candle. So I would view this whole move right here, like from even, even 44 plus, this to me was just one buyer, uh, just driving, driving this higher. But what's interesting is we cracked insanely hard and we're not participating with that Tesla breakout. In fact, we're rolling over. So that buyer collapsing, like, and finally being done, this to me was like the, oh my God, was that why this was squeezing? Is whoever was getting squeezed or whatever, is that the last of him? And so that was the first tell in here when we're able to break through that buyer and exhaust him and get under 45 while Tesla is breaking out. So this to me is the first tell of like, oh my God, we couldn't break those highs. You know, death candle melt, lower high, <clears throat> and then the buyer's exhausted. And that might've been the buyer, you know, potentially contributing to this whole squeeze to begin with. So that's a really, really big sign. And so this is probably the real, you know, this is the first sign. Then that buyer failing to bring this to highs and this fail is probably, you know, the second and third really. Then the other thing is this close is very, very weak. Uh, DX, or sorry, Tesla really reclaimed. This closed very weak. <clears throat> Even more interesting is, <clears throat> excuse me, even more interesting is after hours, Tesla starts ripping. 
Tesla's ripping into into the um, 8 p.m. overnight session while this can't go anywhere. So that relative weakness is a huge, huge tell. The volume was a huge tell. That buyer being exhausted was a huge tell. Now let me get to the biggest sign for me. <clears throat> Excuse me. So again, like I said, Tesla starts ripping into the after hours. And I'm just like, holy shit, I can't believe this is going to do this again. Then if you check the overnight session, what ended up happening was we rip to highs. We go to, I think, 366, 367. And so again, it's my theory that these are all international overnight, you know, Asian clients that are trying to get in on the action. The last two days in a row, pattern recognition matters. The last two days in a row, it has been driven to insane heights in the overnight session. Every single time the buyers in the overnight session are rewarded, we keep going higher. And interestingly, like my opinion, I even texted this to my, to, to a couple of my friends was if this overnight session fails, that's probably game over for, for all this stock. Like if, if we, if we open up back in this, in this range, I felt it was going to be game over. Sure enough, um, in the overnight session, we crack back to, you know, below 360. We can't really go anywhere. We open around here <clears throat> and then yes, Bitcoin kind of leads the way, but then this cracks insanely, insanely hard for us to go to 360 all the way down to 328 like that is game over <laughs> you know like like that's we technically break prior bar lows pre-market this is the biggest difference of any of the price action we've seen for days so so tesla was my number two choice um dxyz was was my number one and so let's let's discuss that for a second why is dxyz my my number one choice and D, and tesla my second because tesla like there is actually a fundamental reason for this to be up. Like we, many could argue, like, I don't know what the right price for Tesla is. How much will Elon Musk and the Trump presidency help Tesla? Who the hell knows? But clearly it's probably positive. It's like, I can't really quantify that. Like, yes, I think the market agrees Tesla should be up some um, meaningful amount. DXYZ though, it's just totally Fugazi. Like literally with near certainty, in the long run, that ticker will be down 90%. Again, with near certainty. So the amount of like, one, Tesla's breaking out above 300, we're approaching all time highs. People are getting super, super psyched about this. Like there's very good rational reasons for why Tesla should be going up. DXYZ is pure Fugazi. So like you have a lot of people that are hyper bullish, uber bullish on Tesla. It's, there's real flow to it. Like real buying legitimacy. DXYZ, it is just dumbass Fugazi. Yes, again, if you're a trader just making a trade long, that's fine. If you're an investor doing that, that is the dumbest shit on earth. You are nearly guaranteed to lose all your money. You are buying something at a 500% premium to its net asset value. You should not be in the market if you're doing that. Any retail trader buying this as an investment, not a trade, like it's the dumbest thing on earth you can ever do. So the amount of gravity on DXYZ is insane. Like, it's just a matter of when will that get absolutely crushed. Tesla, it's like, I don't know, what's the right price? 310, 320? Maybe the right price is 340? <clears throat> I don't really know, but this should be up. DXYZ, Fugazi. And so what ends up happening is DXYZ pre-market is totally unable to... Um, you know, it was, it was weak in the after hours. We're opening down below these prior day lows. That for me is backside. So whenever, like if I have no position, which, which I, you know, I did, but if I had no position, I'm just shorting that. I'm just shorting that break anyways. Right? Like that's, that's the entry. And like, yeah, you can be scared, but like, again, on that pop, it was just one buyer driving that <clears throat> we really shouldn't have been going up there anyways. And yes, if you're doing prior bar highs, yes, the risk is high. Um, against those highs, but the probability of this working is just so high. So, 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 so high once, once that cracks. Um, so that for me was just like why DXYZ, um, was so good and it's backside. So it's just like, you know, any, any pop is just probably going to be faded on this so ridiculously hard. Um, this is like, again, it's just a matter of gravity. This, this had the forced covering there's no reason to be up. It's up the most on a percentage basis. Um, 
you know, versus the moving average, it's up 200% higher. Um, it's, it's, it's just all Fugazi with insane gravity. And again, some of the, you know, some of the dumbest longs on the planet are buying this. It's retail that don't understand what they're doing. You know, you can just go on Twitter. And again, I don't, I'm not talking shit about the traders that are just doing this to be in and out and rather momentum. That's separate. There are people genuinely buying this because they're trying to get exposure to SpaceX, but don't recognize that they're literally guaranteeing a loss. They should not be in the public markets doing that. Um, so yeah, that's why DXYZ was my number one. You know, Tesla, like, uh, for all the reasons mentioned, is number two. Um, and especially, I mean, really, you know, this goes without saying, but that, that 336 or whatever break, that's prior bar lows, and it just set up beautifully. You know, and, and let me rephrase that. It set up well, not, not amazing. Like this was a, a kind of stronger bounce, but again, we didn't go to highs. Um, but but that's that's the money shot. Like this is where it truly becomes backside. Um, so yeah, that's probably a way longer video than I wanted to make. I'm tired. I'm going to bed. Um, and like I even said, by the way, like it was my tweet this morning. Like it was clear that these were going to be high probability backside today. And that means that's when you want to attack. Most people lose so much of their money fighting, fighting, fighting on the way up. Then once it does crack, they give up. They wave the, 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 the white flag. When you want to be cautious, 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 we, you know, we then finally fail overnight. We fail pre-market. We break part. This is the time to attack. I don't know what's going to happen in the coming days, but this is the time to attack. Not fight trend, fight trend, fight trend, fight trend, give up. It's respect trend, respect trend, respect trend, respect trend, fight. And most people do the opposite. Um, no idea what will happen. I will be traveling tomorrow. I will try to get some sleep and not look at any of this. All right, everyone, have a good one. The nuances matter. A um, lot of details to study, study, study. Uh, what a market and not conducive to me not looking at markets. So bedtime at last.